Welcome to this edition of the Clavier Report. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Clavier, where we talk about policy, law, and politics. On this episode, we're going to look at a very important aspect of American political system, and that is the rise of the third party. Now, if you're like me, from the moment you probably came into this world, we've had two major parties in our political system, more specifically the Republicans and the Democrats. Now, throughout history, we've had Federalists, we've had Whigs, we've had Independence Run, but really nothing has really taken hold in our society. Uh, there may be a reason for that, and we're going to take a look and delve into and understanding why that actually may be. You know, but the question now becomes, why is a third party right now so viable? Or is it viable? You know, in our winner-take-all winner system, many times what happens is that you we end up deciding to vote against our own um, uh, best interests only because we don't like the other group or vice versa. But does that really help us? Does that really help our system of democracy? Many would say that democracy itself would be destroyed if we had different parties or multiple parties. But keep in mind, across the world, we have a process called, or an actual political system called parliamentarian, where we have many different groups, many different factions of society that actually are represented uh, in Congress or in their body, their governing body, and they're representing their interests. Now, they may not be the majority, but they're representing their interests. And at least the individuals who are representing them and their interests have a voice. And we see the ability to build coalitions. Whoever becomes the leader of that country, whether it be a prime minister or a president or whatever the case may be, they have to build coalition. They have to reach across the aisle. They have to. It's not, you know, it's, it's not an option. So would our system be better with a multi-party system? Would it be better with a third party that rises to the top to really compete with the Republican and Democratic Party, the two stalwarts or the standards of our political system? These are all very important questions that we have to answer. And I believe that in this society that we have today, in a society of extreme, what is called extremisms, individuals that are, are more progressive, more extreme right, extreme left, or even those that are centrist. This is a question that is coming up that is not going anywhere. But before we take a deep dive into what helped to create this new phenomenon, or we can say new phenomenon in our country or recent phenomenon, first I want to take a look at if we do have a third party, can it really survive? I want us to take a look at this clip by historian Manjur Z before we delve into that. The two-party system of the United States has often been the subject of great criticism by both American citizens and those abroad. These critiques tend to break down along four main points. One is the issue of polarization, the claim that if only two parties exist, they're likely to adopt policies existing on opposite sides of the spectrum making compromise far more difficult and national progress toward either party's goals impossible, as each changing administration would then work to undo the achievements of the prior. Second, and in contrast to the first critique, is that a two-party system creates an illusion of choice, that the two parties at the end of the day are basically the same, that meaning in the modern sense that both Republicans and Democrat politicians are just self-interested globalists in the pockets of major corporations and elite groups. Mind you, this is something held by both people on the right and left, both of whom have historically attempted to remedy this by supporting third parties or non-establishment candidates like Donald Trump in the case of conservatives or Bernie Sanders in the case of the left wing. And we often find active roadblocks put in place by the establishment to prevent the non-establishment faction from competing on equal footing. Thirdly, there is the matter that with only two parties, both sides are attempting to maximize their total voter appeal and as such widen their platform